this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll compare various left-leaning decreases, as well as modifications of those decreases, plus some tips and tricks for improving your results. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. What I have here are two swatches where I worked stacked decreases. So every right side row, I worked a decrease in the same location um, on each of these. And on this swatch, I used the knit two together, which is a right leaning decrease. And on this swatch, I used three different types of left leaning decreases. So the three types of decreases that I used on this swatch were knitting two together through the back loop, which is what I have right here. Then I used a decrease called SKP or slip one, knit one, pass the slip stitch over. That's the oldest version of this particular type of left leaning decrease. And then up here, I did the SSK. After I've shown you these three and what the sort of the advantages and disadvantages are of these three, I'm gonna show you some variations uh, on the SSK. Now, this swatch was perfectly fine when I wanted to show you three different decreases and I wanted to work them each several times before I worked the next one so you could kind of see how they stacked up on each other. But as you can see, unless you have a lot of stitches that you start with, you can run out of stitches if you keep practicing different types of decreases. So what I'm going to demonstrate on is a swatch that is not going to change size. I'm going to give you a link to instructions on how to work a swatch like this, so that if you wanna try the various different decreases I'm showing you in this video, if you wanna um, practice them and then compare them with each other, you can do them on a swatch that isn't going to change size. The first decrease I wanna show you is the easiest of the left leaning decreases and it's called knit two together through the back loop. And what you do is you insert your right hand needle through the two stitches from right to left and you're going through the backs of the stitches. And then you uh, grab your working yarn and you pull it through. So it creates a left leaning decrease, but it also twists the stitches at the base. You can see that, that if you pull to the sides on these stitches, the legs are crossed at the bottom. This is true for the upper one and the lower one. The rest of the stitches in your stockinette fabric are not going to have crossed legs. So that is a disadvantage to using this particular decrease is that while it leans left and it's very easy to work, it doesn't really match the other stitches in your fabric. This is really the oldest of the left-leaning untwisted decreases. It's in some of the pattern books that I've been using lately in antique pattern books. It's described in there, and it was certainly the one that was most often described when I learned to knit back in the 80s. These days, it's more often called SKP for slip one as if to knit, and the reason you're slipping as if to knit is to change the stitch mount, and then you knit the next stitch, and then you pass that slip stitch over. So you're having to manipulate, you're, you're passing a stitch and then you're having, or slipping a stitch and then having to pass it over. So you are manipulating that top stitch. But the result is that the legs of the stitches are not crossed at the bottom. And that's the reason that you slip as if to knit so that when you pass that stitch over, it will not be crossed at the bottom. If you, pat, if you slipped as if to purl, you'd end up with a twisted stitch on top. So this next decrease is called SSK, and this will produce the same result as the SKP decrease produces, um, but it's a different technique, and it's a technique that was first described by Barbara Walker back in the 1970s. And in this situation, you're slipping two stitches, one at a time, as if to knit. So you slip the first one as if to knit, you slip the second one as if to knit. And you wanna keep these stitches close to the needle tips and you don't wanna really pull your needles apart. You're not, you don't wanna stretch these out. 
Now that these two st stitches have been slipped, you take your left needle and you insert it through the fronts of those two stitches. And then you can work them together. Now this is different than just knitting two stitches through the back because you have slipped those stitches as if to knit, which changes their stitch mount. And that means that when you work them together, they will not be twisted at the, at the base. There are a couple of different ways of working what's called, some people will call it an improved SSK, uh, which I, would, I have an argument with um, because I really would just consider it an alternative uh, because whether or not it's an improvement is really subjective. So in this situation, you're going to slip the first stitch as if to knit, and you're going to slip the second stitch as if to purl. And then you're going to work those two stitches together. Now the result is that the stitch on top is still going to be untwisted um, because you slipped that first stitch as if to knit. But the bottom stitch is going to be twisted. And that the idea of twisting that stitch is that it, it might help prevent um, so much of the slack going into this top stitch which can enlarge it. So this is a second version of this alternative or modified um, or improved SSK. So rather than slipping a zip to knit and slipping a zip to purl and then working them together, I'm gonna get my working yarn out of the way. You enter this first stitch as if to knit and then, ent and then go through the back of the stitch, the second stitch, and then you grab your yarn and you come back the way you went in. So you're going to pull the yarn back through that route, which is a little hard to see, but anytime you knit or purl a stitch, if you come in through the front, you're grabbing the yarn, you're coming back out where you went in. If you're coming through the back, you grab the yarn, you have to come out the way you went in. And it produces the same result. It requires less manipulation because you're not passing stitches back and forth. Um, and, it, and it produces the same result. I'm gonna show that to you one more time. You enter as if to knit through the front, and then you go through the back of the second stitch, grab your yarn. I'm gonna see if I can show you how you, you're pulling it through. So you're gonna pull it back through the back of this one and then through where the need, you're just gonna follow the path of the needle to come back uh, through there like that. So this next one isn't working the SSK any differently, it's what you do on the following row. So you work your SSK as you would normally Slipping two stitches one at a time as if to knit, inserting the left needle through the fronts and working them together. So what you do on the following row around is that when you get to this position where, where the decrease is and you get to this stitch right here, you're going to work that one through the back. Now if you are working in the round, it will be very easy to see when you get there. If you're working flat and, you ha and you're purling across, you have to know where the position of the stitch is. So this is not the easiest thing to do if you are working back and forth, but if you're working in the round, it'll be a little easier. So I'm just going to note that this is the fourth stitch from the end of the garter stitch here. So for this stitch here, instead of purling it like normal, I'm going to purl it through the back. And again, if I were working in the round, I would knit that through the back instead. So the idea with uh, this technique is that a twisted stitch is going to kind of give the impression more of leaning left. What happens a lot with left leaning decreases is that the plain rows between them tend to be more straight up and the decrease itself will lean to the left so you get kind of a zigzaggy effect. So the idea with this is that it's going to lean more to the left and create a better transition um, into any plain stitches coming from that uh, left leaning decrease. This last one is one that Tech Knitter came up with. She calls it SYTK. 
So it's, you slip the first stitch like you would for any SSK. And then when you come to this second stitch, what you do is you insert your needle and you yank on it. So you're pulling slack. And when you pull on that, it reduces the size of this stitch. And then what you do is you come through the back, slip it through the back so that it twists. Now she will have you pass these two back and then knit through the back. I don't see any reason to do that. I would just insert my needle through the fronts like I would for a regular SSK and then knit them together. What that does for the bottom stitch is it creates another twist. So when you are doing this uh, slip one as if to knit, slip one as if to purl, a version of that of the SSK you have a twist at the base of that back stitch but this one has a double twist and the idea is that you're pulling out any slack that would be in that first slip stitch because that's the one that tends to get enlarged and that's sitting on the surface so you're pulling that out and then you immediately twist that stitch and then you twist it again it sort of locks down all of that slack it um, helps to keep it pulled out of that particular stitch. So as I mentioned, you can get kind of a zigzag appearance in your SSK. This is where the decrease is. You can see the other stitch below it right there. And this stitch is more straight up and down. And you see how the left leg is a little shorter here and the, and the right leg of this plain stitch is a little longer. So one thing you can do is kind of adjust the tension on that stitch so that it, it more closely matches the other stitches. You can do that um, all the way down if you need to. That's one solution. So if you don't want anything twisted within your left-leaning decrease, I wanna show you how I work my SSK if I'm really concerned about there being too much slack in the top stitch, is I slip the two stitches as if to knit and again I'm being very gentle with them I'm just transferring them and I'm keeping them as close to the tips as I can I insert my needle uh, through the fronts of those stitches and then I I pull the yarn through but as I'm pulling this left needle out right here I just bring the tip down against the right leg of the stitch that's underneath. So you can see the stitch that's underneath here. I put my needle on that right leg and then I kind of uh, pull on it and it pulls out some slack on this top stitch. When things get washed and blocked, they tend to even out more, but that's something that, that I will do in order to pull out excess slack from that top stitch as I'm working. So again, I'm going to leave a link to instructions for how you can knit a swatch like this and so you can experiment with different types of decreases. You can work the same one over and over and then work a different one several times and compare the results. Particularly as you space decreases further apart, do you find that you like one when you're a specific one when you're working every right side row, but you, maybe you get better results with a different one? if the decreases are spaced further apart. And the yarn that you use can also make a difference. So if your project has very dark, nubbly yarn with a lot of texture, the type of decrease that you use may not really make a difference. And so using the easiest one might be the way to go. But if you're using a light colored, very smooth yarn, that may be a situation where any defect in your decrease is really going to be amplified and you want to be careful about your choice. Today I showed you three commonly used left-leaning decreases, as well as modifications that aim to improve the results of those decreases. Most of these variations include twisted stitches. For some knitters, the twisted stitches improve the results, but for others, no twisted stitch will be welcome, whether it's on the surface of the fabric or hidden underneath. When working with a gauge that is firmer than what is listed on the ball band, I find that if the bottom stitch of the decrease is twisted, it will slightly elevate that top stitch above the surface of the fabric. 
I am a knitter who doesn't tolerate twisted stitches when the surrounding stitches are untwisted. So I tend to use the standard SSK in most situations, but I have been known to use knit two together through the back loop when the yarn is dark and the location of the decrease means it won't be seen. I also occasionally use Tech Knitter's SYTK decrease in very specific situations. What you prefer to use may be different. Experimenting with alternatives will expand your knitter's toolbox and may offer solutions to problems you encounter in your projects. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.